Okay, so hi there everyone, we're now on our next video in Mathematics in the Modern World, and here we're going to talk about our next module in coding and cryptography. Um, generally now, we're going to talk about coding more than cryptography in the next video, and we're going to preserve ourselves with the cryptography lesson. So, coding and cryptography um, has been there ever since. Um, remember when Julius said, Caesar um, sends his messages to his generals or any trusted alliance, he would make sure that the messages are secured and fully well encrypted. Um, this is to make sure that the information will not be leaked and only those who know the algorithm, that is the pattern of how to encode or decrypt the messages um, he used can understand the said messages. Moving forward today, security of information is not only applied to war but in all possible aspects where vital details need to be concealed and covered however codes and cryptography does not only apply to the above mentioned this as well applies to technology to data analytics and many more in this um, module the purpose and importance of coding and cryptography will be discussed where we will uncover the basic or its basic applications and how it is used. So the objectives of this first part of the lesson is going to be at the end of this module, you must have described some coding schemes that are used to assign identification numbers, use check digits for error detection, discuss the process of disguising data, and analyze encrypted data. So specifically in this video, we're going to focus more on the first two objectives we're going to um, deal with the second two on the next video so coding and cryptography okay um this um is going to tackle this this part of of of, of the statements here so keeping something secure means making a way sorry keeping something secure means making a way that no one would ever see or find but sometimes keeping it beyond the understanding of others um, codes not only keep things secure, but as well as keeping everything in order and making it all systematic. Instead of writing the entire name of a location, um, you make, we can make use of initials. Instead of, of the name of a product itself, we can make use of a corresponding number assigned. And instead of giving the entire location, one can just provide the zip code. So there are many other uses of codes, which brings forth systems, order, and security to its use. So codes, take note, were already around ever since the ancient times. A code is a symbolic way to represent information. So in qualitative inquiry, a code is most often a word or a short phrase that symbolically assigns a summative, salient, essence-capturing, and or evocative attribute for a portion of language-based or visual data. That is taken from Saldana's book um, in 2013. So take a look at this um, symbols. They are quite familiar. Um, what you are seeing in this, in this first part here is what we call hieroglyphics or the sacred writings. These were first um, used by ancient Egyptians in the writing system. More so, Egyptians not only devised this um, hieroglyphics, as in the writing system, but they also devised a number system, or a numeral system. In terms of the number system used, the Roman numerals was utilized all over Europe until the 1600s, you know, until Fibonacci came and then introduced the, the Hindu-Arabic numerals. Um, but before that, we'll... Um, Everyone in Europe was was uh, was using the Roman numerals, but for the Egyptians, they have their own number system such as this, such as these. So, for instance, if you're going to write, um, say something like this one, this one, uh, this one, this one, this one, and uh, a couple of these, this is equal to three hundred. Sorry, two hundred. Okay, thirty. That's the three, five. So 235, okay? So we have two scrolls, we have three heel bones, we have five um, sticks. Um, the next here for the 1,000 are the lotus flower, 10,000, the pointing finger, 100,000 is a toad. In some books, they use the fish. 
the 1 million is an astonished man and the 10 million is the rising sun codes um most recently um are being used in musical scores genetic codes and the dna okay so we can see codes here in this um, score and also we can see codes here in the dna um these codes stand for this you can see that on, you can see that on the on the legend now codes are also used in identification of numbers. So one purpose of codes is for identification. So identification number are used to identify individual items, more specific um, products, people, um, accounts, or documents. So these numbers are useful for easy recognition and detection of materials and for tracking inventory of products and documents. So um, a numeric identification number is a single positive number or a string of digits sometimes separated by spaces or dashes um, and an alphanumeric identification number has a string of digits letters and or symbols so the following are examples of identification numbers so the first one is an example of an alphanumeric identification number so it has um, a string of letters and a string of symbols this is an alphanumeric identification number uh, this is one example of our registration plates um, at our um, lto Okay, so that is every time you see this code, this is a unique code for everyone. If they're going to search this code in the data in the database, they will see your name popping up if you have registered that car um, using this this um, symbol or using this um, this code. Also, this is an example of a numeric identification number wherein it's all about it's all numbers there. Um, this is one example of of, of uh, the identification or or the bar graph the bar um, codes in the book. So you can see the first three is the ISBN. The second is the origin country or the language group. The next is the publisher identifier. IDs is on the second, the last two, and then the last number is the digit check. This one talks about the barcode and the price. And talking about digit check, we're going to talk about that more. In the next slide so a check digit or the dig check digits okay or a check sum is used to verify errors on identification numbers these are single numbers generated using the other characters from the identification number so one particular example that we're going to show here is how to verify or check if this code is valid we will call this the universal product code um, this is the UPC. So from now on, every time I say the UPC, it's the universal product code. All right. So for the UPC, the check digit is usually indicated on the far right of that certain code. So UPC is the barcode, which is the identification number of a retail item such as a grocery product. So you you can see that in your ordinary purchase, um, you know the ones that the that the counters are scanning, not 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 the bar not the, the, the barcodes, but the numbers below that. You can see those numbers there. It consists of twelve digits. The first eleven characters specify the source of the item, the product number, and the twelve digit is actually the your check digit, typically modulo ten, check digit. So when you say modulo ten, um, in short, it should end with um it should end with um zero to make it all you know to get the answers correct or when you say modulo check modulo 10 um we're living in the universe of of a clock imagine a clock with uh 10 digits only so we imagine one two three four five six seven eight nine so imagine if you are living in a clock of 10 hours only so when you say um 13 o'clock it's going to be equal to three Okay, so when you say it's at 28 o'clock, it's equal to 8. Similarly, imagine our ordinary clock. Let's go back there. 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So when you say, for example, 1300 hours, this is the military time, right? So 1300 hours is actually equal to 1 p.m. in the 12 hour format. So this is um, actually modulo 12. So we can write it here as modulo 12. So actually, this is part of, of um, modular arithmetic. If you want to learn more about modular arithmetic, I have a batch of videos about number theory talking about this subject. But uh, take into consideration that um, 
that this is formerly called the arithmetic of remainders. So how did we get the 1 p.m.? Well, we can see that on the clock, but actually what we're doing is 13 divided by 12 um, equals some number, and then the remainder is what we want in particular. So for example, if you say, um, well, if, for example, if we will accept, say, 20, 100 hours, so this is mode 12, what is it in the 12-hour format? So 20 divided by 12 is 1 remainder 8, right? 1 remainder 8, meaning it's 8 p.m. The remainder is what we want in particular. Okay, so for example, um, if we're now living on a, on a mod 10, when you say 17 mod 10, that will be um, 17 divided by 10, and the remainder, the answer is 1. There's only 1, 10, and, and 17. Remainder 7, so the answer is 7. When you say 54, uh, let's make it 94, mod 10, therefore, um, the remainder, um, the answer, 94 divided by 10 is 9, remainder 4. Okay, and that's our, uh, that's how you'll get it. Okay, the remainder is what we want in particular. So that's when you say modulo 10. So these are examples of UPCs. Um, again, you can see the barcodes. The UPCs are the ones below. What do they represent? Um, there are some examples here. For the six-digit company prefix, we have the company prefix on the first six digits. The next five is the product number. And then the last one is the check digit. For the nine-digit company prefix, prefix we have the uh, first nine digits to be the company prefix and then the two next numbers are the product number and the last one will be the check digit so what can we do with these well we we, we try to first consider the 12 digit upc and we'll assign names to those 12 digit upc so we're going to call the first one to be a sub a1 second will be a2 third will be a3 fourth will be a4 and then so on until the a 12, which is the 12 number, actually your your check digit. The following computation is carried out in which each digit in the odd numbered position is multiplied by 3. So each digit in the odd position is multiplied by 3. Then all the numbers are added such that um, we're going to multiply the first digit by 3 and then add it to the second digit, multiply the, th the third digit by 3, add it to the fourth digit, plus... Um, the thrice the fifth digit plus the sixth digit plus thrice the seventh digit plus the eighth digit thrice the ninth digit plus the tenth digit thrice the eleventh digit plus the twelfth digit so you can see that all the odd numbered odd position numbers are multiplied by three so how do we check if it is correct if the sum does not end with the zero the barcode is incorrect or invalid meaning there's something wrong with the barcode that we have or the UPC that we have. So it should be that the sum should should end with zero. That is, the sum should be in modulo 10. Okay? Now let's consider this example. So to illustrate how a, a UPC check digit is calculated, consider the following examples um, of this UPC. We have 7708323030. I'm sorry, we need to delete this one. Um, this one here, um, there's no, there's only one zero. This is a over and uh, on over right. So seven seven zero eight three two three zero eight five four. So we are tasked to find the the last number. That's the the check digit. What is the check digit here? So first, everything in the odd placed odd um odd num odd oh, what do they call that odd odd place digit. Starting from 1 here, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. They will all be multiplied by 3. And as a result, um, we have this. 7 times 3 is 27. 7 times 1 is 7. 0 times 3 is 0. 8 times 1 is 8. 3 times 3 is 9, and so on. And then we want to add or get the sum of all those numbers. So the sum is, let's get it, 27 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 2 plus 9, plus 24, plus 5, plus 12. So the answer is 103, if I'm not mistaken. 103. Let's do it again. 27, plus 7, plus 8, plus 9, plus 2, plus 9, plus 24, plus 5, plus 12. So pretty much that's 103. So we're going to add the results. So this is going to be, sorry, 103. 
and then we 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 would want to find the nearest number in which we're going to put it here in which it will be a multiple of 10 okay what number will we put here in such a way that it will be a multiple of 10 so notice that the nearest number that we can add with this 103 so that it will become something that ends with 0 is 110 right so what will we add to 103 to make it 110 so we're going to add 7 therefore this here is going to be 7 and the last upc that we'll have is going to be 77083208547 that is your uh, check digit Okay, so let's consider the next example. Um, all rights reserved. We're going to have, for example, the Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Okay, so um, consider this as the UPC of this a certain product. And you may, if you want, you can we can check this. Uh, check if, if if it's correct. So we have zero, three, eight, zero, 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 one, two, seven, seven. So this is. Let's just take note of the odd numbers. One, three. 5, 7, 9, 11. And we multiply those by 3 for all the odd digits. So we have 0 plus 3 plus 24 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. Multiply that by 3 plus 3 plus 2. Multiply by 3 plus 21 plus 7. So what's the sum? Let's try. I'll make my I'll make use of my calculator. 3 plus 24 plus 3 plus 2 plus 21 plus 7. So the answer is 60. The sum is 60. So the question is, does 60 end with 0? Yes, that's a direct answer. So therefore, hence, this UPC is indeed, indeed valid. So I am valid. <laughs> okay? So meaning that UPC is valid. So um, that's it for example 2. Um, these are the meanings of this UPC category of goods for the first one here. These are the manufacturer. This is the product code. This is the check digit. Okay. Now, let's consider this scenario wherein we determine how a barcode scanner would detect the error if the above mentioned number, the, the one be mentioned before, was entered into a system as 05. Instead of 3, it is 05. So the second digit was changed from 3 to 5. So how... Um, how does a barcode scanner would detect the error? So um, let's see, meaning it's looking at the check digit of this UPC. So take a look at this, for instance. So instead of 3, it becomes 5 here. So we do the necessary things. We multiply all the odd um, position digits to, to, be, to, to be 3. So we have this answer. And then we try to sum them up. The sum is 62, which is, okay, not ending with zero. That is, it's not modulo 10, perfectly modulo 10. So therefore, since a digit sum of the results is 62, not ending with zero, an error is detected, and therefore, this is not the correct UPC for that certain product that we have um, presented a while ago. An alternative solution can be brought up. That is, we're not going to include the digit set, or rather the check digit in the process. Um, for instance, we're going to show it here. We're not going to include this one. So meaning if we're not going to include this one, we are expecting that our answer would be exactly this. Uh, modulo 10, remainder 7, because that's our, our check digit. If it will not end up with modulo 10, remainder 7, it's wrong. So let's try to do the process again. We have the UPCs here, the numbers, multiply them by the necessary things, and then get the products of each, and then get the get the sum. Okay, so the sum is 55. 55 is 55 um, mod 10 is equal to um, what? Equal to 55 divided by 10 is going to give us 5 remainder 5. So meaning the answer is 5. But what is written here is 7. Therefore, since the result is not equal to the given check digit, which is 7, an error is detected likewise. Okay, so that's how we do our check digits um, in coding. Um, that's the end for part 1, encoding and cryptography in the mathematics in the modern world. Hopefully you you reviewed and learned something from that. Um, in the next video, we're going to talk about cryptography proper. 
So thank you very much and um, hope you like and subscribe. Salamat!